In 1950, Chicago was home to eight of America's greatest department stores, Marshall Fields, Carson Perry, Scott Sears, and Montgomery Ward, just to name a few. It was also home to the first mail order catalog. Our city played a major role in the development of the modern department store, and that is the subject of this new book called Lost Chicago Department Stores. And joining us is historian and author Leslie Goddard. Good morning to you. Nice to have you on. Thanks. It's nice to be here. You know, it's funny. I take, I love every summer, I'll take the um, architectural cruise a couple of times, and they always bring up the significance that Chicago has played when it came to department stores and, and, and why the post office is so big. So I want yeah. you to explain to our viewers how important was Chicago to the growth of the modern department store we know today? It was really important. And when you think about Chicago history, it kind of makes sense. Right after the Civil War, there were all these new manufacturing methods, mass production, and Chicago was the railroad center. So it was getting mass quantities of goods very quickly, very cheaply, and that was great for the stores. But it also was seeing this enormous population explosion. So there was this great density of shoppers and Chicago invested in public transportation so people could get downtown to State Street quickly. It was the perfect storm for these big stores that sold anything you wanted, you know. By the 20s, they were saying you can buy a $10,000 painting or a paper clip on State Street. And that is important to note too, as we look at some video um, of the old Marshall Fields that we now know as Macy's, and you're probably like me, it's always kind of gonna be Marshall Fields mm -hmm. to me. But um, let's talk a little bit about um, not only Marshall Fields, but Montgomery Ward, Sears, because Part of that tour I always hear every year is that we were home to the first mail order catalog as a result of these department stores. That's right. That's right. Uh, it, it was actually Montgomery Ward in 1872, and it was like a one page list of items. But it was the first time that it had been there had been a general merchandise catalog, and it very quickly grew. And then in the 1890s, Sears Roebuck, also out of Chicago. And it's the same reason. They could get lots of merchandise, very quickly, low prices, and then ship it out. And when the post office starts delivering packages, it was an explosion. The first day that the US post office was doing parcel post, Montgomery Wards was already with, with wagons ready to go to rush to the Chicago post office to be the first company to use the parcel post system. And Sears mail order business went up fivefold the first year that, that parcel post was available. Well, so it was mail order and it was luxury, whether you're talking about Marshall Fields, right. green customers and all that. Okay, I want to go back to one of these pictures because I love this You from your book. Yeah. Um, the one I want to see again is the one of State Street. So this is a photo of crowds on State Street, Christmas 1949. Tell me what's happening in this photo. Isn't that incredible? Yes. This is the parade, the arrival of Santa Claus. It was November 19th. So it was part of this effort to get shoppers to shop more early for Christmas presents because the density of shoppers. I mean, that picture, that's yeah. about a half a million people down there to see that parade. The crowds were unbelievable. Someone said if you stand at State and Madison long enough, everyone you know will pass by. But it was that concentration, eight, seven or eight department stores in that stretch of State Street. It was estimated in the late 40s that 40 to 50 percent of all general merchandise purchased in the Chicago, in Chicago, was purchased in stores on State Street. Wow. So it was a unbelievable concentration and the stores competed. If you remember those great Christmas windows, right. the animation and the characters like uh, Uncle Mistletoe at Fields and uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer at Montgomery Ward. It was a way to get the attention of these huge numbers of shoppers. That's amazing. And that's Very why State Street was called the Great Street, right? Yes, Very exactly. nice. Very nice. Okay. Lost Chicago is the name of the book. Thanks for joining us. Very fun. Where can people get their hands on your book? Uh, it's available at major merchandisers, Barnes and Noble and Amazon, and a lot of your local neighborhood bookstores have it too. Great talking to you this morning. Thanks. Have a great Thanks day. for having me.